morning, good morning, Royal Chapel. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Amen. Let us all stand and call to worship. Heavenly Father, it's you that we give the honor, the glory, the praise. Father, we know without you we can do nothing. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and share in truth and spirit this morning. Father, we pray that your word reigns all over this country. Father, we're praying for the dignitaries, the people that are in leadership positions of this country and continent and abroad. Father, we pray that you touch the members of our local community, local government. Touch them wherever they are, Father, because you have them in place in leadership, and we pray that they put you first. And, Father, touch each and every one of us around the throne this morning. Father, for we come for not form or fashion, but to come and edify the body of Christ. For we know that this is what it's all about. All these and other things we pray in your son's magnificent holy name. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We will now have a song by this magnificent duel this morning. Wait a minute. Where's, where's Sincere? Mary, you seen Sincere? I saw him, he was on the screen. Okay, we'll now have a magnificent song by the two of us. Amen. Hey, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Hey, I'm a soldier in the clothes on I got my war clothes on y'all yeah. I got my war clothes on yeah I got my war clothes on y'all if I die let me die in if I die let me die in the end if I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. Hey, he said, I got my war clothes on, y'all. Got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on, yeah. I got my war clothes on, yeah. If I die, let me die in there. If I die, let me die, y'all. If I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. I got my breast played on the indie. I got my breast played on. Breast played on. I got my breast played on. Yeah, I got my sword in hand. 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 Protected by God in I am protected by God in thee. I am protected by God. I am protected by God in thee. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on, y'all. 
got my own war going on. I got my war going on. I'm gonna fight to the end. end. I'm gonna fight to the end, y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna fight to the end. I'm gonna fight to the end, yeah. Oh, my Jesus is my Savior in. I know that Jesus is the Savior in. If you wanna find me, you can find me in. If you wanna find me, you can find me in. I'm a soldier indeed. I'm a soldier. Yeah, I'm a soldier in. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. How many of you are soldiers? Have you got your war clothes on? Are you a member of the body of Christ? Well, then you're a soldier. I'm reminded in the old military days that, you know, if, if you're a warrior for Christ, you're going to be a member of the body of Christ and your gifts will speak according to how he deemed to have blessed you. So every other member in this regiment is going to have a rifle and nobody should have a gun. All right, so we're going to be about our father's work. Amen. Amen. You know, the scripture today is coming from the Beatitudes. Amen. And it's going to be uh, paralleling with the faith. The faith, because it requires faith. Not an abundance, but it requires faith. What did he say? The size of a mustard seed is sufficient, but requires faith. And we're going to be coming from the NLT version. NLT version and it's coming from Matthew the fifth chapter third through the eleventh verse Matthew one of the gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke and John telling saint, the same incidents but in four different points of view. Let us, let us all stand for the reading of the word in reverence to him. And we're going to be reading from the third to the eleventh. These are from the Sermon on the Mount. God bless those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God bless who mourn. Bless those who mourn for they will be comforted. God bless those who are humble. For they will inherit the whole earth. God bless those who hunger and thirst for justice. For they will be satisfied. God bless those who are merciful. For they will be shown mercy. God bless those hearts. Those whose hearts are pure. For they will see God. God bless those who work for peace. For they will be called the children of God. God bless those who are persecuted. For doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you 
and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in that same way. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. The sermon title, I take off running a little too fast sometimes. The, term, the, 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 the title is entitled Champions of Faith. Champions of faith. Now, we're going to know something about champions before this sermon is over today. And we're going to know who the champions are Amen. in here. We're going to know who the champions are. We're going to point them out. So get ready if you're a champion. Get ready. The finger will be pointed. But before we go into that, going to have another musical selection. Amen. Yeah. 
in the blessed business he has blessed us to be here now that, you know that that was a sermon in and of itself but you know what I'm, I still got a word I'm gonna hit you with the word before you get out of here it's a good good thing my brother Gibbons here this morning because I met him at the gas station this morning and I was gonna talk about him if he hadn't showed up today, but I tell you, boy, boy, you better be glad you came, boy, I tell you. I could have tailored it to you, I could have tailored it to you. Better than any tailor could have tailored a suit, but thank God, but I love him. I can talk about him like that now and then. Yeah. I can talk. Amen. You know, we read the scripture, we entered the, the, the edifice this morning. The ushers were smiling. Yeah. And, and, and we have our health and strength, and we thank God for the opportunity to come and impart truth and to just, just, just fellowship and edify the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. Let, let us look into him just once again. Father, I pray that you touch Royal Chapel like never before. And not only Royal Chapel, Father, but every church under the sound of your voice. Touch us that we may reach somebody. This body of Christ may reach somebody. If they desire to flee the wrath, that we will be able to win them over and you will do the rest, dear Father. Father, I pray that you give me that special touch that makes preaching easy and understandable that even a five-year-old child could understand it. Father, all these and other blessings we ask and receive in your son's holy name. And we all say, amen. Amen. Champions of faith. Champions of faith. You know, um, when I was writing my dissertation in my doctorate year of um, 
my studies in um, divinity, they had a measure that you had to meet, a standard that you had to come up to. They wanted quality, quantitative, and, and, and authoritative, and normative, and all these uh, attributes would be exemplified in your writings. And hopefully we won't have to do 50,000 words this morning, but you know, we can, we can get a little short in that. But there is meaning to this. And the Beatitudes, there's strong meanings here. They are, I want to ride more on the faith side of it. Like James Cleveland said, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Now, it's not the quality, that's correction, the quantity of your faith. Not the quantity, not the pneumatic, the numbers. It's not the quantity of your faith, but it's the quality of your God. Amen. Amen. The quality of your God. Is your God the big G or is it the little G? Now, remember in Greek mythology, they had all the little G's. Zeus, Apollo, and all these guys, they were little G's. Sometimes we may make little G's out of our homes, our children, our vehicles. Certain incidents in life, we, we make little G's out of them. Some people think it's a big G, okay? But we talk about God, God Almighty. In the end, God is going to be the champion of all, correction, Jesus is going to be the champion of all champions here. He's going to, he, no, he's not going to, he is. He is the champion. I, you know, I'm, I'm tripping a little bit, but I'm going to get there. Amen. So who are you putting your faith in today, man or God? The little G is not going to work. The little G will tell things you told them. They'll turn on you in an instant. Amen. Amen. They will persecute you, drag and hang your name on the four corners of the earth. But you tell it to God that he is your adversary because Jesus Christ is in heaven interceding on our behalf. But he left us a comforter. The Holy Spirit, tell me there's no trinity. Amen. Amen. First of all, what is, you know, we, we, our faith is what we exercise when it comes to being a champion. Your faith is tested. It's definitely tested. What is faith? What is faith? Let's hit the rubber on the road right now. Um, our dictionary says it's complete trust and confidence in someone or something. Uh -huh. Complete trust. Does that sound familiar? Faith is in the spirit and trusting your life to God through Jesus Christ. No man enters the kingdom and except by Jesus Christ. Anything else, Paul said, if they come to you in any other teachings, we're to turn from it. It's not of God. Any other teachings, okay? In Hebrews 1, correction, Hebrews 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now this is our spiritual foundation of it. Now we have a clearer understanding what faith is. So let's drive this on a little further. Let's look at some champions of faith in the Bible. I picked out two that uh -huh. stand out. Uh -huh. If you would look at 1 Samuel 17, verse 4, description. This is a description of young David. 
as he takes down Goliath. We're talking about young David. We're not talking about the old David that messed up, okay? We, we haven't got that far yet. In Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, chapter 49 through 51. 1 Samuel's the first chapter. I mean, 17, chapter 49 through 51. It says, there are some Goliaths in our lives, Okay? But in there, in 49, 51, it says, reaching, this is what David did. David was reaching into his shepherd's bag, taking out a stone and hurling it with a sling. And it hit the Philistine in the forehead, which was Goliath. The stone sank into him, sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his shelf. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, just as David faced the giants, faced this giant Goliath, Goliath was big in measure. He was over nine feet tall. And we'll probably dig into that just a little bit and give you some of his attributes. Oh, he was a mighty big man. But David was small in stature. And he hurled that stone. And you know the story. We heard the story, so I'm not going to dwell too much on the aspects of the story. But guess what? There are some Goliaths in our lives today. But our faith in God, through Jesus Christ, we can and will defeat them. Amen. We will defeat the giants in our lives. Amen. We will defeat them. Amen. What are some of the giants in our lives? What are some of them today? We must put our faith in God. Put your faith in God Amen. when that wayward child is out of control. Amen. And everything you've done to talk with them and plead with them and seem like your prayers were coming up short. But our time is not God's time. So just put your faith in God. When there's trouble on your job, seems like people have no understanding, no compassion. They come at you left and right. Just put your faith in God. Amen. When your bills are due and your money is tight, what do you do? Put your faith in God. When that old car breaks down, the only transportation you have to get you to and fro, you just put your faith in God and he'll make a way for you. He'll make a way. He'll turn it around. Yes, we haven't got this far just on our actions. We've got here by the unadulterated glory of God and God alone. It was nothing great that we done. So you put your faith in God. When, when old man death creeps into your circle and break the chains and you want to blame God sometimes. You want to question God sometimes. It's okay to question God. Some people say don't question God. That's a lie. You may question him and say you have not because you ask not. Amen. When you come up short, you get, you get the camel knees. And you get on your knees and you have a talk with God. You have a talk with him. It may not come when you expect it, but he'll answer it. But in his time, not your time, he will answer it. And that old circle's broken. But that too is for a season. If, there's the conjunction, if that person was a believer or not the age of accountability, they, I promise you, they're with the Father in heaven. And if you want to see them again, you keep yourself in that circle in one approach. And how's that done? It's not done by works. It's by accepting him. I could not keep, but get yourself in that circle. By accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
This is how it's done. Amen. Now my health begins to fail. Some people say, now you're sick. You want to call on God. I can't think of a better time. You're sick. He's your helper. He's your help. All of your help comes from the Lord. All of your help. So call on him. Some people say, well, now he's 90 years old or she's 90 years old. Now they want to run to the throne and get saved. Thank God that they had a chance. Thank God that that individual had a chance. Some people say there's no food like an old food. I agree with that because it hurts me sometimes to see an elderly person. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't bite me too bad when I see the young ones. I, I know the young ones are going in early. But when I see an older person and every foul word coming out of their mouth is this and that and that and this. I'm not going to quote that. that great, great. I'm not going to quote what they're saying. Now that hurts me. And I want to reach out and touch them. I had one to do it just the day before yesterday. Dear friend of mine, I hadn't seen him in a long time, and he was letting him fly. And when I told him that I was pastoring Royal Chapel, it was too late to clean it up then, you know. He, 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 he wait, 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 you know, you know, I don't know. But, but, but you know, if you're 90 years old and you get it together, you stand on God's face, that's a good point right there that they did get it together. Proverbs 29.1 did not apply because if you get turned over to that reprobate mind, that way of thinking, there's no hope. There's no hope, but there was still hope if that person got saved and they truly trusted and they, they believed in their heart and confessed with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He died. He went to prepare a place for them. It's a done deal. And we as believers are not to be concerned about whether they are who they say they are or not. You just pray God that they went on because nobody knows who's going to heaven except you, yourself. It's, it is personal. It is personal. Some people in the church will look down on others and say, look at him. Look at him. Been selling dope all his life. Got in a car accident. He's about dead now. He comes in here and wants to serve the Lord. Now, wait a minute. We're, 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 we're bodies. Each, each of us are members of the body. And when one member of the body get, it, it comes in, he joined, that, that member joins the body. We are all equals. We're all equal. There is. God has no respect to the person. There's not one above the other. And I'll give you another example. It's just like when a member joined Royal Chapel Church. You can have somebody in this church that been in here when they cut the cornerstones and start building it. There's equal ownership. In that church, if that person just came in and joined in the next five minutes. Amen. Amen. Equal. You're all equal. There's not one above the other. Well, my family purchased the land. So what? I'll never forget the slave master gave it to my great, great, great granddaddy and he gave it to the church. Now you want to hang a picture up. Granddaddy. My granddaddy. Not your granddaddy, my, come on now, let's not be childish in our understanding of the Bible. God has no respect to person. That's right. That's right. All that makes is good history. There's nothing wrong with good history. But don't gloat on it. That's right. Don't gloat on history. Amen. That's Amen. All right, then trouble breaks out. On the left, on the right. In front of you, behind me, it seems like the, 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 the hell hounds on your trail. Okay. What do you do? You put your faith in Almighty God. You call on God. You put your faith in God and he'll do the rest. Man born of a woman is bound to fall every once in a while. Right. There are going to be some stumbling blocks in their way. When I say man born of a woman, I'm talking about man and woman. Okay? 
Amen. All right, now, 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 all, all trouble is broke out on left and right. You made it through that. Okay. It's hurricane season. Here comes hurricane, whatever they decide to name it. Here comes hurricane, um, let's give it a name. Um, here comes, no, 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 the Florence was in the old days. What about, uh, what about Hurricane Devon? Hurricane Devon has been let loose. Wait a minute, why you want to give it my name? I'm, hey, I'm talking about a hurricane. I ain't talking about y'all. All right, hurricane breaks out in the land. It's destroying things, tearing down trees, flooding buildings, government buildings, churches. Even this edifice we're in was, was torn down. But God, but God, we're standing here today in an edifice that was rebuilt, that was destroyed from the waters. Even this was temporary. But you were able to pick up the pieces. Rebuild. You didn't turn tail and run and say, well, let's just tear it down and we'll rent it out to some farmer and plant some corn out there. Uh -huh. you can. No, sir. They rebuilt. You guys. Yeah, thank God. You guys planted the seeds that the shade will be able to be endured. I mean, in, uh, uh, the shade will be enjoyed by those youngsters that are coming along. Those youngsters, we're doing for them what our forefathers did for us. That's what we're doing. All right, we made it through the hurricane. Here comes the pandemic. What are you going to do? Put your faith in God. So what? The pandemic's here. What did he just say? In the song, uh, um, Ezra said in the song, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. In the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on. I'm not talking about this robe. I'm talking about that sword and shield of faith. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. All right, we made it through the pandemic. I heard the president say just the other day, the pandemic's over. He said it was over, but let's give him a hand clap of praise for the numbers that he has. So when they say the pandemic's over, it's not that his remnants are not still here, but it's in a stage of the numbers are low and it's treatable if, if uh, contracted in a certain length of time. There's still people sick and dying from it, but let them die in the army of the Lord. <laughs> Hear people say, isn't that bad about old poor Joe? Old Joe died. Isn't it a shame? They'd be at the funeral, you know, twilling their thumbs. Old Joe, Joe's dead and he's gone on. If Joe was a believer, Joe's like, remember those ants, the story I told you about the ants, the caterpillar, correction, the caterpillar? Uh -huh. Little caterpillars were marching along there with the little legs and crying because they saw the cocoon open and then they, 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 one of their brothers had gone on and they saw the cocoon. They're walking along the ground, they're just crying. And that barnock butterfly flying up high over them with two wings just looking down at them, beautiful. And that's the way we are when we die in the Lord. People will be here crying, moaning. Just like those caterpillars, moaning and crying. Oh, poor Joe. He's gone home. No, poor Joe, poor Joe, my foot. You're the one that's poor. Joe wouldn't come back if he could. Do you realize Joe, absent from the body, is present with the Lord? So, you know. It's okay to cry, shed a few tears. That's the body's mechanism of relief. But don't forget where old Joe is going. And fix it up so that you know that you're going, not a works. Lest any man should boast. But this is done through your faith, God's grace. And it's a done deal. Amen. 
So when we get it together and we become members of the body of Christ, we are given gifts. The moment you become a believer, you are given spiritual gifts. Some may receive one, some may receive two, but trust me, you will receive a gift from God. So, uh, in 1 Samuel 17, 4 through 7, it says, if we talk about Goliath, the Philistine, the champion of Gath, of Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks as a force of Israel. He had over, he was stood over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and had a coat that weighed about 125 pounds. He also wore a bronze leg armor and carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder and a shaft with a spear and heavy and thick and a weaver beam. It was triple with an iron spread it that weighted 15 pounds. His armor bearer walked ahead. His armor bearers walked ahead of him carrying a shield. So Satan is our enemy. We are small in stature compared to Satan. But we are just as big as a giant when we have the faith and glory of God within us. When we have God on our side, Satan cannot possess us. He can only oppress us. That's it. And that too is for a season. And guess what? This too shall pass. Remember when you lost that loved one and you thought all hope was gone? Now you're able to laugh and talk about the things that they did. Because time heals those wounds. One more champion I want to talk about. Let's talk about Job. Let's talk about Job. Amen. Job was a champion of faith. Yes, yes, yes. Job 1 through, one through 3 says, um, in Job chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, he said, There once was a man named Job who lived in the, the land of earth. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and strayed away from evil. Correction, stayed away from evil. He had seven sons, three daughters, over 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants, and he was, in fact, a righteous person, in the, the most richest person in the entire area also. Job was what we call a billionaire today. And what happened to Job? Satan and God were having a conversation. And he says, have you tried my servant Job? Uh -huh. He says, you got a hedge around him. He said, if you move that hedge, he'll curse you. That's why he, says he will curse you. Yes. So what did God do? He says, all right. I'll move the hedge and you can take everything he has. And let me make a long story short. Take everything he has, even inflict his body. But don't you kill him. That's right. Don't you kill him. Even Job's own wife turned on him. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Job was scraping the balls with broken pottery. Yes, he was. Balls all, all over his body. Preach it now. Preach it. I don't know now. You know, a lot of, a lot of us would have folded up tent by then. Yes. Scraping balls. And his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Uh -huh. He says, woman, you are a fool. Yes, he did. Yes, sir. So Job's wife had given up, but Job had given up. That's right. That's right. Job was a champion in the faith. He was a champion. He stood the ground. Yes, he, 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 he had some short moments. But he never relinquished his faith. Never. He stayed 
a true soldier in the army of God. What about you today? When hell breaks out in the church and somebody comes in and dis destroys, uh, appears to destroy the fellowship, are you going to turn tail and run? Are you going to relinquish your status? Are you going to be a soldier of Christ and stand and do what says the Lord? You're going to pull it together and let people know that for God you'll live and God you'll die. So hold it together. After all what Job went through, God blessed him even the more. He was a soldier of Christ. That's what's going to happen to us. Out of all the infirmities that we go through on earth, we're going to be blessed even the more because when we get on high, my God, there are many mansions there and one of them belongs. Y'all repeat this after me. One of them belongs to me. One of them belongs to me. You know, I was, I was uh, uh, talking to one of my relatives one day and she gets on you if you get to bragging and, you know, she'll get on you. And I had just built my home and uh, she said, uh, I told my auntie, I says, uh, you ought to see my home. You ought to see it. My goodness, I was just thinking about that thing, praising the Lord. And she said, Michael, don't you say that. Michael, Michael, please don't say that. I said, what? Don't you have one? I said, I'm talking about the home up on high. I said, what? You think I was talking about that shack that I live in now that's going to burn? All of this is going to burn. You put your treasures up on high. That's where you put your treasures because this is going to pass away. Amen. I, she, I got a kick out of right. I knew she would take that path. I was setting the stage, boy. I tell you, you know, I, I just love it when a plan comes together. What about Job? His friends came to visit him. They sat in silence for a while just looking at him. Finally, they spoke up. It was three of them. Yeah. I'm not going to call the names. It's a long story. Job, they, they wanted to know what he had done wrong. Uh -huh. Amen. What he had done wrong. Yeah. People will do that today. Whenever we fall into infirmity, they, they must have done something. <laughs> they must have done something. Yeah. But, but they don't realize, listen, Romans 8.28 applies. All things work together for the good of them who love God who are called according to his purpose. So our infirmities are nothing. Even uh, uh, Paul asked, not, was it Paul? Yeah, I believe, yeah, Paul asked him to remove the thorn from his side. He says, no, I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, and, and it was there to keep him from getting the big head. So some of us get the big head sometime and God take us down a, a peg or two. Get you in line. I know because I've been taken down a peg or two. Or three. <laughs> we get the big head sometimes. Shoot, I almost got the big head when I, got, I received the commission here at Wal uh, Royal Chapel. Yes, sir. I didn't think my hat would fit anymore. Walked into a good group of people. Nice edifice. I had been through so much. When you go through a lot in life, you appreciate the good things when they come. I had been through so much, but no more than anybody else had gone through. You know, I, I, I'm not special. There's nothing great about me. I'm just a child of the king. That's all. Just like you are. You're a child of the king. All of us are members of the body of Christ. So, if you look close at what happened to Job, God didn't do it to him. Satan did it. Amen. God only withdrew his hands of protection. Amen. People are so quick to blame God. Right. Well, God, God, God did this to me. God did that. I'm blaming God. No, God didn't do it. God only withdrew his hands of protection. Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy. And if you are a believer... Romans 8, 28 applies. Nothing can condemn you. Man looks at the outside, but God knows the inside. 
So don't pay any attention to what man, man has to say about you. Keep moving forward. When trouble knocks on our doors, will we keep the faith in God or will we turn away from God? Amen. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes, you know, and I'm like before stated, you know, trouble breaks out on your, uh, your job and you want to quit just because the boss man's looking at you sideways. Sometimes the boss man will leave there before you leave there. You never know what God has planned for you. Sometimes, sometimes you'll be on a job and God has other plans for you. And you'll try, oh, I got to hang on to this. I got to hang on. But sometimes God is trying to move you to bigger and greater things sometimes. Sometimes when you get fired from a job, you, you, you put your head down. Oh, my God, I've lost it all. Have you ever thought that God is moving you to greener pastures? You know, we're so quick to give up the flesh. But just remember from which cometh your help. This is the most important thing. Remember where your help come from. When some people say, well, it looks like I'm at rock bottom. Okay, you're at rock bottom. Well, that means there's only one place to go but up. There's only one place to go but up. You know, I'm reminded of a song that the gentleman here, we used to sing. Rise up, O men of God. Rise up. Are you going to set back and become stagnated in your faith? It, or are you going to move forward? Amen. Let me uh, get that hymn. Nothing wrong with them old hymns. Rise up, oh man, it's number 405. I don't know if you guys have your hymnum there, the old Baptist hymnum. It's page 405. Red, red, I have to read. But anyway, I'm not going to sing it because I, 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 I... I might sing a little bit of it, okay? Yeah. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Give me a seat. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Ezra. It is. We used to sing this without any music. And it goes. Rise up, O men of God. Have done with lesser things. Give heart and mind and soul and strength. To serve the King of Kings, rise up, O men of God. His kingdom's tarry is long. Bring in the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Rise up, O men of God. The church for you doubt wait. Her strength unequal to her test. Rise up and make her great. Lift high the cross of Christ. Tread where his feet have trod. As brothers of the Son of Man, rise up, O men of God. Amen. 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 You know, I got to thank Miss Audrey Cole. She taught me how to sing that. She, guess what? We were like the little caterpillars when she went on to glory. What was it, about two or three years ago? Miss Cole went on to glory. She was our piano player. She was the only piano player in the, uh, the uh, uh, AME Zion organization that played by notes. She set those notes up in front of her and played them. And she could play anything. If I had just a tenth of that talent, oh my goodness. She was awesome. And, 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 and see, even though I was reading that, I know the, the, the notes, how they go. And I know the notes in it, but Miss Cole told me, 
Don't you look at the words, Michael. Ah, ah, ah. Don't look at the words. Look at those notes. You see those notes? And the, all the symbols, all the emblems. She knew every emblem. She taught music in school. So we as men of God, we got to rise up and be counted. Stand up. You say you're a man, prove it. You want to sit back and let the women do everything. How can you be a champion of faith when you lead from behind? Amen. We got to lead, men. That's another sermon. I, I, I'm not going to beat up on you today. I just want to touch on that. And I applaud you men that are here today. I applaud you. Because it's hard to find men in the house of God. My God. If you look in the churches, the, the churches are outnumbered by women. And then they get upset when a woman preaches. Get upset. The men won't step to the plate. The men won't step to the plate sometimes. They sat back, you know, uh, 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 the Lord didn't call me to preach. He didn't call me to do that. I, I'm an associate pastor. That's what I want to do. I want to stay in the background. Get out of the shallow water and come out into the deep. Where the sharks are. We, 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 we are, we, we are here to bag these sharks. You got to come out of the shallow water. Don't sit back and then talk about, well, I, 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 you know, um, uh, I would, I would uh, join that. Uh, I would join the usher board. I would join the deacon board. But uh, uh, I don't know if God called me for that. I'm not going to say what I used to say when I was in back in, you know, my other days about that situation. You know, I, about like Rev. Ford told him one day, I'll never get my buddy, my pastor, Rev. Ford. Rev. Ford said he walked up on the boys out under the tree one day at the club. They were drinking the rule because he said, boys, I would take a drink with you, but somebody go and tell it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So we have spiritual gifts when we become believers. It's a done deal. Whether you decide to use it or not, and you will be held accountable for not using it. In 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 4th verse, NLT says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. Amen. Amen. So only God gives those gifts. You go around here saying, well, I, I can run, outrun anybody on the track team. The 100 yard dash, you thought it was of your own ability? Because if it wasn't for God, you would be able to draw the next breath. That's right. That's right. Come on now. But we're talking about spiritual gifts, okay? Let's get back to spiritual That's gifts. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says, every, every believer has a gift. Now, isn't that what I just said? Every believer has a gift. Some have two, three, four, but none of us have them all. So don't get the big head and think, I have all the gifts. Is that when they say they're holier than thou? No, it doesn't work that way. Amen. This is what makes us champions in the faith when we put them in action. This is what champions are made of. They don't set on their gifts. They use them. Use them in the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says, it is... It said, it, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all the gifts. He alone decides which gift, which gift each person should have. Amen. He decides. The Holy Spirit. So, you hear some people saying, well, I got to pray for the tongues. I got to. Come on now. The Holy Spirit decides which gifts you get. Okay? The Holy Spirit decides. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, your spiritual gift is to be used to edify others. So it's not for you. Look at Ezra. He plays that keyboard. That's a gift from God. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, Ezra don't play that keyboard just to listen to the melodies for himself. It's edifying the body of Christ when he comes in here and he plays that keyboard. It's for you. It's for you. 
When you join that usher board, it's not to make you look good. You exemplifying as a body of Christ to help others in the church. That's what you're doing. You're helping others. When you join the deacon board, Amen. correction, let me get away from board because uh, Sister Shirley straightened me out on that and said, this is a ministry. It's not, it's not a board. Uh, you know, I'm from the old school. We say boards, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm not above, you know, getting it together. Uh, I, I'm getting it together, Sister Shirley. When you join the, the, the deacon's ministry, yes. you're not joining it for you just so they can put on your tombstone, deacon, so and so, and you're getting some kind of, no. You are there to serve. Amen. Serve others. Ushers, ushers, you serve others. Amen. Trustees, you serve others. Yes. IT department. You're serving others. Keyboard players, drummers, bass players, guitar players, you're serving others. Preachers, you're serving others. It's not your self-gratification. It is service to others and we're all bodies, members of the body of Christ. What about the body of Christ? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Let's say I get a hammer and drop it on Deacon Stanley's toe. It's better his toe than mine. No, no, let me quit. <laughs> if Deacon Stanley drops a hammer on his toe, okay, it sounds a little better that way. And he was getting ready to dance with uh, his wife. Where's Sister Sandra back there? Let's say he was getting ready to dance with her. They had a nice tune going there, and Deacon Stanley said, hey, come on, you remember when we got married? Let, let, let's break a move on that, you know. And, 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 you know, he's in a good mood. And he said, let me get this hammer out of here. Boom! It throws his whole game off. Oh, my God. That big toe. When one member of the body of Christ is hurting, we all hurt. We all hurt. Whether you drop a hammer on your toe, you stub your toe or whatever, or, or uh, whatever, a toothache or whatever. When one member of the, your body suffers the entire body suffers. That's correct. So if one of you suffers an infirmity, I'm hurting with you. I feel your pain. Amen. Amen. So you're not alone. Don't ever think that you're alone. When, when, when you lose a loved one, first of all, if they're in Christ, you didn't lose anybody. A loved one can't be lost if they're in Christ. There's no way you can lose a believer. That believer is that big butterfly that just went on, went on to be with Christ, and it's a done deal. I even say, so you know, uh, I used to say, well, I, I lost my mama back in 2014. No, I didn't lose my mama. My mama had gotten it straight with Christ, and that's between her and Christ. It's personal. I'm not putting it into heaven. That's God's job. Amen. I can only go on what the word says and what she said. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. So I, I, I can't tell, uh, 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 I'm getting ready to say Miss Jackson, but I can't tell Janet, uh, Janet, I know you're going to heaven. I can, I can believe Janet's going Amen. to heaven. Amen. I can believe. R. Kelly said he believed he could fly, but we saw where he flew to. <laughs> Let me get off R. Kelly. <laughs> What, is it, what kind of bird can't fly? Let me quit. But anyway, tell me Christians can't have fun. We can have fun. But I try not to take up too much of another person's weakness. So, uh, Mr. Kelly, I apologize. You know, I, hope, I pray that R, R. Kelly gets it together. If he hadn't, I pray that he does. Because when we get into these situations, but God, whether you're in prison or whether you are a member of Royal Chapel Church, you should be able to get it together because you heard the word and it has condemned your actions. It has convicted you of your actions. So you should get it together so that you, too, can make it into the, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We have people that, some people sitting in the churches around the country. I'm not going to say here. I'm not, 
There's people sitting in the churches. They haven't gotten it right with Christ. But you got people, <coughs> excuse me, that are incarcerated in prison that have gotten it right with Christ. And if they were to die, they're going on to glory. And the people, some people sitting in churches won't even make it. Sometimes it takes going down a notch or two to get it together. People say, oh, well, you're in prison now. Now you got saved. Thank God. If it wasn't for you going to prison, you, you probably would have had to wait a little longer or something. I don't know, but God's going to get his number. Okay? So our spiritual gifts are given to each of us to be used to edify others. That's what it's for. To edify others. Amen. Champions out of faith have gifts and they use them in the body of the Christ. And they understand the value of their own gift. They understand the importance of it. Uh -huh. So 1 Corinthians 12, 21 says, The eye cannot say no to the hand. I don't. It says, um, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Amen. Amen. So when somebody leaves the church, they pick up their bag of marbles, I don't need you. Go ahead, preacher. You say you're a member of the body of Christ? If you who you say you are, you'll come back. You'll come back. And remember when I said when one of our brothers has fallen, we must go to them and restore them. We must go to them and restore them. Don't stand back and gloat on their infirmities. I knew he wasn't who he said he was to start with. I knew he wasn't a child. I knew he wasn't one of us. No, we go to them, brother. Pray with them. Welcome back. We welcome you back. You, you, come on. Let's, you're one of us. You're one of ours. You're one of God's. Let's get it together. Come on. We, open on. Bring it in. I got it right here. Bring it in. This is how we do it. I had to touch on that again. Every single part of the body works together. The body, just like this body, the body of Christ, it works together. Yes, it does. So now we know, we all, everyone in here, I told you I was going to point some fingers. Every one of us in here are champions of the faith. We're champions of the faith. God has no respect to person, even though David defeated the giant Goliath. Even though Job never relinquished his faith. Those champions are no different than us. We're all equal. It's all even. God has no respect to person. Amen. Even though your name is not published up on the walls all around the country, that means nothing. You get your glory from those people. But where believers get their glory is up on high from Christ himself. So if one person suffers, all parts of the body of Christ, we suffer. That's why when somebody has a loved one that passed away, we, 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 we cook a little food or we, we go to their home, we sit with them, we comfort them. And even long after then, we have them on our minds as they go through the healing process they go through it. So restoration should happen to those, like I said, outside that have left and bring them back in. This is what the body of Christ is about. We help one another. We celebrate together and we hurt together too. Amen. One last thing I want to leave you with before I go. And, and think about this now. I was getting ready to walk out of my home this morning and I was thinking about this thing and it hit me it was this one verse and it's in Psalms the 32nd and the 7th I had already put my footnotes in of what I wanted to 
give to you what the Holy Spirit gave to me. And the Holy Spirit put this on my heart. And, and, and it hit me like a brick wall. This sums up everything that we have talked about today. Psalms 32, 7. It says, for you are hidden. It says, you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory interludes. This is what it's about. When we are believers and we are champions in the faith, our Father protects us just like Job was protected. That hedge of protection is around us. When Satan's walking up and down the streets seeking whom he may devour, he can't touch us. He can't touch us. That's why it's important that we get it right. Why we got blood, I'm um, correction, breath in our body. Get it right while we got a chance. That's the most important thing. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. So if you're not a champion in the faith, Some criteria may need to be met. One is that you must be a believer. So let us look unto him. If there's one out there that hadn't received Christ in the pardon of his sins, if you desire to flee the wrath that is to come, now's the time for you to get it right with God. If you would come, if you want to be saved, if you would just come, now is the time. If you would come. If we're all in order, maybe there's one that wants to be under the auspices of a God believing church. If you don't have a church home, Royal Chapel's doors are open. You stand, Dick and Stanley, please, sir. Deacon Stanley, the members of Royal Chapel and myself were glad to welcome you in. Amen. And we'll work with you, help you, share scriptures with you. And most of all, we'll be an example of what true believers are. Amen. We'll show you what a real champion is. And you too can be a champion. Thank you, sir. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's have the officials to come. Now, this is the day now. This is the time to really get glad. It's the time, the hour of giving. The hour of giving. Let us get it right with Christ. temperature down a little bit out there, you know, and we able to enjoy the fall of the year. You know, I don't care what anybody says, I love the, the change of the seasons, the four seasons, I love the change. Yeah, you get to wear your shorts in the summer, your, your, your winter attire, I know some of you got those uh, London fall coats that you're going to need later on, you know. Yeah, I tell you, and some of those Stetson hats. I've seen this young man here in action, so I know he's, he's got it. 
All right, now, now it's time for visitors. Do we have any visitors in the house today? And if you're here, you can stand. I'm not going to overlook any visitors. Amen. I'm not going to put him on the spot. I just... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, we, we, we gotta, we gotta, yeah you do, we recording this buddy, all right, like Miss Cole would say, in, in tune to see, in the of God, it's good to be in the house one more time, well I'm from Mount Island A.B. Zion Church, amen, which my pastor, Brother Hayward Oliver, and uh, I'm an A.B. Zion this young man jump right here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's see. Six years, seven years? Seven years. We sung in the middle course. And uh, we had good times. And uh, now he can sing. He can sing, but he can clown too. <laughs> Every anniversary. Every anniversary, he bring us a new song. He just had to do it his way. <laughs> his way or no way at all. But it'd be nice. And we enjoyed it. And we had a good time. But uh, I'm still saying, but, uh, you know, we're missing. So we're missing. So, thank you, brother. All right, brother. You know, uh, brother, brother Giver, um, I'm used to seeing him to my right. He's about one from the end. I'm used to seeing him to my right. And when, when, when we're singing, he gets so excited. He gets so excited. But he, 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 he can't outstump old Thomas Griffin, though. Thomas, Thomas Griffin be right there to me, right there beside me on my right, and he could shout sideways. Day in the morning. But we had a great time. Every year we would have our mail course anniversary, and Cousin Johnny Jr. would get up there and he'd be on the radio. He'd say, Standing room only, standing room only. He wasn't kidding because it was a big crowd there. People from all over came to hear Giver. I'm just picking at you, Giver. <laughs> you remember on the Temptations, he said, Oh, oh, this ain't nobody come to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a roughing. Now I, I I didn't I didn't call myself roughing, okay, but I did pick on him one time. I came in and told him and says, you know what I'm thinking about changing the name of the group. And a couple of guys they took me serious. I'm just having like he said I was clowning. And they looked around, change the name of the group to what? And Thomas and Griffin are Griffin and I were hard hitters. We were the two lead singers. So I said I'm thinking about changing it to. Thunder Michael McKinley and Lightning Thomas Griffin and the Mount Olive Mail course. Because <laughs> you ain't never seen the lightning without the thunder. You know? <laughs> but anyway, we had a great time. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, Deacon, I believe you have an announcement. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. You know, God has really blessed us with a great man of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Did you notice the way he delivered the day? He preached a soul stirring sermon right in the middle of it. He gave a song. And, and told us men to rise up. Amen. Amen. Well, that point well taken, you know, because, you know, as he uh, teaches us, when God came back and his boys were walking into God, he said, Adam, where are you? Amen. Adam was the first one he called, so uh, mm -hmm. point well taken. I want to call my lovely sister Rita up. I got an announcement pertaining to Caden, but Rita come up. And, and she loved to praise God. Yeah. Amen. And she got she she got to give us she got to give us the details on Kate, and then I got a knock. Okay, where are you? I'm 
I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Good evening. Yes, we got a good praise report on Caden. His cancer is now in remission. Somebody's going to watch you tomorrow night. Say to um, Miss Rita, when I spoke to Caden before he went for his surgery and went to the hospital, anybody that is serving God like we're serving God, the spirit that this little boy had, yeah. he told me, he said, I'm not worried. He said, because I've already prayed to God. He said, and I know that he got me. He said, I know I'm going to be all right. Amen. And for me, you know, adult, looking at this little boy, I said, if he got the faith Amen. that he already know that Amen. God got him, I said, I'm going to run and tell him. Amen. And I want everybody in the church with me to run and tell him because this little boy's spirit, Amen. he already knows. Thank him, thank him. Because you. that little boy's spirit was like a light, raining like the sun. Amen. Because he knew that he was already healed. Amen. The word I do, the word I bring Amen. out, praise to God. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sermon we had. And it brought out praise. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know what? It could be me tomorrow. Don't think we are above that. 
That's oh, why no. we got to give him the praise. Mm -mm. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the glory and honor. Miss Clyde, Miss Clara said, I'm going to run on squad. The end going to be. Amen. We ain't got time to stop by and just make flowers. We better be about God's bit. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, I won't go this Sunday. No, we need to go every Sunday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Amen. God has been so good to us. He deserves it. He deserves all. Amen. Leon Gray and orange. If you want to purchase one of the t-shirts in honor of Kato, uh, see Lawana and read them. Now, I've already put my order in, but, but you know, it, me and my wife were talking this morning. You know, it could be one of our grandchildren. Amen. It could be one of my kids. We got to always think about that. Amen. Then we are to help others. That's it. So if you want to uh, purchase a T-shirt in honor of Caden, and it's good here in Ron McDonald House doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch, watch a few bucks for a little T-shirt, because that's a good thing. Yeah. We're doing a good thing. And uh, another announcement that I have on Tuesday at 2.15. All right. The governor of North Carolina will be in Ivanhoe at the Judy Memorial Family Center. Woohoo! Amen. You know what? I know some of you are working, but I'm thinking about it. I think if I was still working over there in God, and I, I tell them, I say, I got to have to eat more. Because <laughs> the governor <laughs> is coming in our little city of Ivanhoe down there. Yeah. And what's so good about it, uh, we don't have to go to Raleigh to see him. Uh, uh, we can go right to the Judy Center. Amen. And, and see him there and shake his hand because uh, Governor Cooper has worked on all of our behalf, white, black, whatever. He has been a champion for us. So, Amen. Uh, we, and our pastor's going to be there at 12 o'clock sharp. <laughs> Amen. Because he's our leader. We want the governor to see that we rep that, that he's representing God for us and we're the congregation. So yes, it is all. Amen. Now, if, if you receive your mail from Ivanhoe or you, uh, you call yourself living in Ivanhoe, his coming is on your behalf. So see, uh, we're gonna, he, you can ask him any question about the water system. We got to get the water system at the church and we really need it here. So be in the place at 12 o'clock. And we just, we, we, we got to feed you a little, a, a little refreshment. Say what? Okay, be there at 220. You don't have to be there at 12 because the pastor got to be getting everything straight from, from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I'm in church? Yeah, I'm in church. <laughs> And when I told Frank called him, told him that we wanted him to be there and the governor come, he said, well, you know what? I might wear my suit and tie. Yes, sir. I might put on a shirt and tie. <laughs> so we want you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you can come and support it, uh, we got refreshments for everybody. So we, you know, uh, we just hope and pray that you get your questions answered, you, you get an understanding of the water system, and, uh, when it's going to be in uh uh, maybe you get an idea of why, how much it's going to cost you. Uh, that should be talked about. So we'll know what's involved in it, you know. So to get that information, you need to be in place, you know, so you can, because uh, you're a citizen in Ivanhoe, so you need to come. All of us is affected by it, so uh, you need to be a part of it. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Amen. Everything's in order. Um, uh, Mom, um, I'm going to try to speak up a little louder then. Uh, uh, Mom, um, I'm, I know um, Sister Shirley's going to translate for me later anyway. Uh, did you ever think that, ever dream that all those years way back, Way back when you and your husband were scratching out a living, you, let, let, get, would you please put a microphone on mom man? Please, please give her a microphone. And let me finish my statement, mom. Did you ever think that you would see the day that the governor of North Carolina would be stepping foot on property in Ivanhoe that you and your husband were in charge of. No, no, I, really, I wouldn't have never thought that, but we tried to live the best we could. Amen, amen. 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 Now, now this is what it's all about, and I, I, I realize I'm stretching the time just a little, but this is important. Amen. When we can see the shade of the trees from where mom and her husband planted years ago. And now look at what we're able to do through our tax dollars, our representation that we have in government with the water quality in this area. You never would have thought that it would spring up right here at home. You never, that, that's, you know, I don't, I've been bragging. I've been bragging all week. I, ever since Deacon Stanley told me this weekend, I, I've been, I, I, guess what? Guess what? The governor is coming to Ivanhoe. I give it. I want you to go back and let them know, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, let me quit. <laughs> I was picking at him earlier this morning. Amen. Amen. No, I, I, just a little bit, just a little bit. But I, it, it was taken back down a notch. It was taken back down a notch. Uh, but anyway, uh, we were on, uh, I got your, your text, Sister Shirley, the, uh, the uh, class that was taught on um, Zoom yesterday. Yeah, I got on and, and it, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe the, the youngsters, the youngsters, they were so apical. In, in their decisions on how to set their goals in life. I mean, it blew my mind. It's beautiful when you see, I mean, there was one kid on there, I don't recall his name, I think he was like eight, seven, seven or eight years old. Oh my goodness. He was on top of things. And, and the, the pastor that, that, that taught, he did a real good job. Young pastor, he did a real great job. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the uh, movement of the Middle District. All right. Um, all announcements, recognition of visitors, everything's in order. Let us all stand for the dismissal. Amen. Amen. Let us look unto him. And remember, throughout your week, remember you are all champions of the faith. Let us look unto the champion of champions right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and share and impart truth. And Father, we count it not robbery to give you the honor and the praise because it's due. Father, you said that you'd never leave us, nor would you forsake us. And Father, we know we're going to stand on the unadulterated teachings of the, the leaders and, and, and the, the apostles before us. You said that you made sure that nothing entered the Bible that shouldn't have been there and nothing was left out that should have been in. And we're going to stand on your word. Yes, Lord. 
Father, all these and other blessings, please protect us as we leave this place and let everything be done decent and in order as we go about our everyday living. Father, touch us with that finger of love. Those that have any infirmities or ailments, touch them right where they are. And thank you for what you've done, Father. If you don't do anything else, thank you for what you've done. All these and other blessings we receive and we ask in the Spirit, through the Son, and to you in the magnificent name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.